Welcome to Classic Movie Recaps. Thank you for watching this video. Before we start, I'd like to remind you to like and sub if you enjoy the content. Now without further ado, let's begin. Today we are recapping a classic of cinema, No Country for Old Men, directed by Joel and Ethan Cohen, and based on Cormac McCarthy's 2005 novel of the same name, where a Vietnam veteran stumbles across over $2 million in cartel money, while both the Mexican cartel and a psychopathic assassin want him dead. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. The movie begins with still scenes of rural Texas. The year is 1980, and a sheriff narrates about changes he's experienced since joining the police. The scene then cuts to a young sheriff's deputy walking a mysterious man in handcuffs to his squad car, and once inside he radios a colleague about the strange weapon the man was carrying, before the car takes off. Back at the station, the sheriff's deputy uses the phone to call a colleague about the arrest, before he is attacked from behind by the mysterious man, who strangles him to death. The mysterious man then washes the blood off his hands before leaving the sheriff's department. In the next scene, we see a car being followed, before the car pulls over for a police vehicle behind it, and we see the mysterious man exiting the police car. The suspect, who is an ordinary man, rolls down his window and asks why he's been pulled over, before the mysterious man holding the strange weapon mentioned earlier asks him to exit his car and hold still, before taking his life. We then cut to a man in the desert named Llewellyn Moss. He is a capable man, and is out hunting deer to feed his family. He uses the scope to get a good shot on the pronghorn, and manages to hit a buck with his rifle, but unfortunately it's not a kill shot and it gets away, so he follows the trail through the desert and comes across a disturbing scene. He decides to approach cautiously, gun in hand observing his surroundings, and realizes that he's come across some sort of drug deal gone bad. He opens one of the car doors and sees a dying man in the driver's seat who begs him for water. He takes the man's machine gun telling him he has no water, before checking the trunk and seeing millions of dollars worth of drugs, ready for distribution. He goes back to the man and asks about survivors, but the man continues asking him for water so Llewellyn leaves. It's clear that Llewellyn is a no-nonsense man, and he deduces that whoever survived the incident fled, and that they would have to rest in the shade from the desert sun. He then comes across two trees on a hill, and looking through his binoculars, sees a man sitting under them. He makes sure the man isn't moving, before approaching gun ready, but sees that the man is dead. He takes the man's gun, and opens a satchel sitting next to him, finding that it's full of money, so he takes the cash and heads home. When he arrives he stashes the machine gun under the trailer, and enters to see his wife, Carla Jean. She asks him where he's been all day, but he brushes her off, getting a beer from the fridge and sitting beside her to watch television. In bed, later that night, Llewellyn feels guilty for leaving the man without water, and goes back with a jug of water to give him, but unfortunately, the man has already died. Llewellyn is just about to leave, when suddenly, he sees shadows on the hillside where his truck was parked, and ducks to find cover. The unknown men, presumably members of the cartel, get in their truck and drive down to the scene. He tries to hide behind a car, but decides to make a run for it, with the unknown vehicle following closely behind, shooting at him during the chase. Luckily, Llewellyn makes it to a river, but is shot in the shoulder as he jumps down the gully, before jumping in and swimming for his life. A hunting dog swims closely behind him, and once he makes it to the shore on the other side, he rushes to load his pistol and shoots the dog just in time, saving his life. Meanwhile, we cut to a gas station in the middle of nowhere and see the mysterious man talking to the owner. He questions the owner on his life, and being the psycho that he is, freaks him out with his questioning and decides that the man doesn't deserve to live. He decides to toss a coin on whether to spare the old man, and asks him to call it. The man picks correctly, so the psycho lets him live, telling him to cherish the coin before he leaves. In the next scene, Llewellyn is patching himself up, while Carla Jean questions him on what it's all about. Llewellyn refuses to tell her, instead ordering her to pack her bags and go to her mother's place in another county, so she agrees. Later that night, we are back at the crime scene where the mysterious man is meeting with his bosses. They walk him through the scene, and it's revealed that he is an assassin, hired by the men. They explain the situation, and give him a tracking device, but it seems that the mysterious man has had a change of heart, and decides to eliminate his employers, killing them in cold blood. 
In the morning, we see the county sheriff loading a horse onto a trailer before he travels to the scene of a burning car. A sheriff's deputy is waiting for him, and Sheriff Bell theorizes that this was a car stolen by the mysterious man. They then see Llewellyn's truck, and looking into the distance, see the scene of the shootout. They approach the trucks, discussing the evidence, before Sheriff Bell approaches the trunk of one of the vehicles, realizing that it's a failed drug deal. At the same time, we see the mysterious man, knocking on the door of a trailer, before he shoots out the lock and enters the home. He picks up some mail from the floor and searches the home, realizing that the occupants have left in a hurry. He then examines a telephone bill, which gives him a clue, before he sits down on the couch, staring at a blank TV. Afterwards, he enters the office of the trailer park and asks the receptionist for Llewellyn's location. The receptionist refuses to give him the information, as it's the motel's policy, and surprisingly, the mysterious man leaves her. Meanwhile, we see Llewellyn with Carla Jean on a bus, as she is leaving for her mother's place. Carla Jean asks if he'll be safe, and Llewellyn assures her he'll be fine, before he bids her farewell and leaves. Later that day, the sheriff and his partner visit Llewellyn's home, finding it empty, but after a quick search, they realize that the mysterious man has just left, so Sheriff Bell takes a seat on the couch and watches the blank TV. Just as the mysterious man did earlier, we then cut to Llewellyn in a motel room, trying to lay low, when he sees an air vent in the room. He removes the vent cover, takes some cash from the case, and pushes the case deep in the ventilation duct to hide it. He then checks to see if the coast is clear, before he leaves the motel, while the mysterious man calls the numbers on the telephone bill, trying to find Llewellyn's location. Llewellyn does some clothes shopping before patching up his wounds in a bathroom, and later that night, while returning to the motel, he gets paranoid and asks the driver to take him to another motel. The mysterious man, however, is on the hunt, seeing an innocent bird and decides to shoot it without hesitation, revealing that he is a psychopathic killer. In the morning, the sheriff's deputy visits the sheriff in a diner, explaining that the ordinary man who was killed wasn't shot, which the sheriff finds hard to believe, not realizing that the killer uses a bolt stunner, a tool for slaughtering cattle. At the same time, Llewellyn visits a gun store, purchasing a 12-gauge shotgun as well as a tent, and later, he saws off the barrel of the shotgun. He then visits motel reception asking for a second room, looking at a map of the motel, and paying for another room which shares the ventilation duct he stashed the money in. He then enters the room, and begins assembling the poles from the tent he purchased. Meanwhile, the mysterious man, who is driving nearby, notices that the tracking device he received has started to blink near the motel. He pulls into the motel car park and uses the tracker to pinpoint the money's location, while Llewellyn is still in his room assembling the poles. We then see Llewellyn removing the cover of the vent and using the pole he's assembled to retrieve the satchel, while the mysterious man begins to silently search the motel. He shoots off the lock of Llewellyn's first room and comes in shooting, killing the cartel members inside, who are also hunting the money while Llewellyn, who is in the next room, hears the shots and quickly takes the satchel. The mysterious man then searches the bathroom, finding a cartel member cowering in the bathtub, before closing the curtains and ending his life without hesitation. He continues searching the room finding nothing, before spotting the ventilation duct, realizing what has happened and that Llewellyn has escaped. We then cut to an elevator rising in the city and see Carson Wells entering an office. Carson is a Vietnam veteran and a hitman, and is being hired to track down the mysterious man and return the money to its rightful owners. The man at the desk is a drug lord, who asks him if he knows Anton Chigur, the mysterious man. Carson replies that he's worked with him previously, and that Anton is a psychopathic killer, devoid of conscience, remorse, or compassion. He then leaves the office to begin the search. Later that night, Llewellyn pulls up to a hotel. He enters the hotel and approaches the clerk, paying for a room, before bribing him to let him know if anyone else enters the hotel after him. In the early morning, Llewellyn can't sleep, wondering how the cartel were able to track his location, so he searches the satchel and finds a small tracking device inside a wad of cash. Unbelievably, at that very moment, he hears a faint sound from downstairs, so he calls the front desk, but there is no answer, realizing that something's wrong. He peeks under his door grabs the shotgun from his saddlebag and sits on the bed, ready for action, before turning off the light and waiting. Suddenly, 
A shadow outside the door appears, so he cocks his gun. But strangely, the shadow leaves. Within seconds, the lights outside the room go out and the lock is blown off the door. So Llewellyn lets off a shotgun blast and jumps out the window but is shot in the process. He runs around a corner and examines his wound, before flagging down a passing car and getting in. But a hail of gunfire is unleashed on the vehicle, killing the driver instantly. Llewellyn ducks down to avoid the gunfire, attempting to drive the car blind. But he can't see where he's going, so he crashes into parked cars. He stumbles out of the car, taking cover across the street, before he sees Anton approaching in a reflection and waits for the right time to strike. Anton slowly approaches the vehicle, searching for any sign of Llewellyn, before spotting a trail of blood on the road and taking note of its direction. At that moment, Llewellyn pops out from behind cover, unleashing a shotgun blast at Anton, moving forward, firing his shotgun where he saw his attacker, but can't see Anton anywhere. He makes his way to the Mexican border crossing, coming across a group of young men and paying them $500 for one of their coats so he can hide his injuries, before he looks for a place to stash the satchel, throwing it over a fence into some bushes below. He then walks into Mexico, passing the border guard, and wakes up on the street the next morning to a busking mariachi band. He opens his jacket to give them some money, requesting that they help him get medical treatment. Meanwhile, back in West Texas, Anton is in a car, cutting up some cloth and cotton balls. He exits his vehicle and approaches a parked car dousing the cloth and gas, before setting it alight and carefully placing it in the gas tank. He then enters a pharmacy just as the car explodes, which causes a distraction and allows him to steal medical supplies. We then cut to Anton in a motel room, performing various first aid treatments on himself, patching up the wounds he sustained in the gun battle with Llewellyn. Meanwhile, back at the sheriff's office, the sheriff talks to a colleague about the cartel situation, telling her that he'll soon be leaving to meet with Carla Jean in Odessa to talk about bringing Llewellyn in for questioning. Llewellyn, however, is still in Mexico and wakes up in hospital to see Carson Wells at his bedside with flowers. Carson introduces himself and wastes no time in asking him about the money, but Llewellyn tells him that he spent it all on booze and women. Carson isn't amused and tells him that Anton is traveling to Odessa to kill his wife, trying to convince Llewellyn to hand over the cash for both their sakes. A few hours later, Sheriff Bell is meeting with Carla Jean at a diner, and he explains the danger that her husband is in, pleading with her to contact him if Llewellyn calls her, but she's convinced that Llewellyn can handle himself. At the same time, Carson is searching for the money at the Mexican border, following Llewellyn's movements and spots the satchel in the bushes below. Carson then goes back to his hotel, but as he's walking up the stairs, Anton greets him from behind at gunpoint, telling him to take him to his room. They sit down in the room across from each other, where Carson pleads for his life, offering the money to Anton, but Anton can't be reasoned with. Carson tells him that he's crazy, before the telephone rings and interrupts their conversation, so Anton ruthlessly kills Carson without a second thought, calmly picking up the telephone. Llewellyn is on the other end calling from the hospital, and the two discuss the location of the money. But Llewellyn is too stubborn to listen to reason, losing his temper and threatening to kill Anton before the call disconnects. Back in West Texas, Sheriff Bell and his deputy are in a diner discussing the chaos that has been occurring in their town, trying to make sense of the times they're living in, as crime is on the rise and the nature of the crimes are becoming more disturbing. The movie then cuts back to Llewellyn, who has left the hospital to re-enter the U.S. from the Mexican border. The border officer questions Llewellyn about being in a hospital gown, but after realizing that Llewellyn is a Vietnam veteran, the border officer orders a colleague to help him get into town. He then enters a store to purchase a set of clothes before calling Carla from a bus station, telling her to meet him at a motel in Albuquerque so he can give her the money and she can escape while he deals with Anton. Anton, on the other hand, enters the office of the man who hired Carson Wells, immediately shooting him with a silenced shotgun before staring at his body. He asks a witness who he is, and the man tells him that he's a nobody who works in accounting. The man then asks if he's going to be killed, before Anton turns around and says, that depends, do you see me? We then see Carla and her mother, traveling to a motel in a cab, which is being tailed closely by the cartel. They pull over at a bus station, when they are approached by a cartel member posing as a friendly man, helping with their luggage. 
He asks where they are going and Carla's mother unknowingly tells them, giving them the name of the motel. While inside the bus station, Carla calls Sheriff Bell and tells him that she was contacted by Llewellyn who wants to meet at the Desert Sands Motel. Back in Albuquerque, Llewellyn has arrived at the motel to meet Carla, while a woman sitting by the pool invites him for a sexy favor in her room, but he declines, telling her he's married, so the two make small talk while he waits for Carla's arrival. We then cut to see the sheriff rushing to the motel in his vehicle, witnessing armed cartel members fleeing the scene. He pulls into the motel, exits his vehicle and approaches the room, before seeing that Llewellyn has been killed in a shootout. Later that night, Carla finally arrives at the motel, exiting the cab to find that police have surrounded the area. Sheriff Bell approaches her, taking off his hat, and Carla realizes that her husband has been killed. In the early morning, Sheriff Bell meets with the local sheriff at a diner, discussing the state of society, the money, and the drugs, and how it's destroying their communities. They then leave the diner to head home and talk about Anton Shikur, a type of criminal they have never encountered, who returns to the scene of his crimes and murders everyone in his path without any thought or hesitation. This gives the sheriff an idea, and he decides to return to the scene of Llewellyn's death. He looks at the door, seeing the missing lock, realizing that Anton is inside. He searches the room, finding nothing, before sitting on the bed and looking down, spotting a coin on the floor, besides a removed ventilation cover. After sunrise, Sheriff Bell visits his brother, who lives in a rundown house, and is wheelchair-bound. They reminisce on their past, before the sheriff talks to his brother about his struggle to come to terms with the ever-changing world around him, and the chaos that he's seeing in his community. His brother tells him that it's nothing new, the world is always changing, and he can't stop what's coming, before the scene cuts to Carla Jean at her mother's funeral. After the funeral, she returns to her mother's house and sees an open window, realizing that Anton is there. She opens a door, seeing Anton sitting in the shadows in the corner. She sits down and tells Anton that he has no reason to hurt her, but Anton replies that he gave his word, revealing that he made a deal with Llewellyn to spare her, but he turned it down. Carla tells him that he doesn't have to do this, and Anton finds it funny, telling her that he hears that same begging from his victims all the time. He then pulls out a coin, telling her to call it, but she refuses, telling him that the coin doesn't have a say, it's his choice. We then see Anton leaving the house, stopping to check his shoes for blood, before he drives away from the scene. Suddenly, his car is involved in a major accident, totaling the vehicle. He stumbles out of the wreckage and sits on the sidewalk before paying two kids to give him a shirt to sling his arm and to keep quiet about what they saw. He then gets up and hobbles away down the street, walking away with serious injuries and it is unclear what happens to him afterwards. We then cut to the sheriff in his home and it's revealed that he has recently retired. He has a conversation with his wife about a dream he had, conveying his lingering guilt that people will always struggle to do the best they can to make things better in life, while the world seems to get worse around them. The screen then cuts to black, and the movie ends. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a fantastic day.